This week on Rockstar Superhero. What were you doing when you were a little kid? Were you playing with your friends in the dirt? Were you living a placid life of televised simplicity? My guest today, Plum Green, was not only not doing these things, but she was living with artistic parents who took their young family on a journey to another part of the world, a quiet place of dark loveliness, which speaks through Plum's music to this day. An introvert by nature, our conversation was light and full of introspection. I appreciate her perspective because not only is it radically different from my own, but it's important to understand. Through knowing her story, Plum's music finds its way through the dark force of the mind into the light of an unknown but hopeful future. Listen to her new album today and enjoy the atmosphere as it slowly devours your soul. This is my conversation with the soft and inspiring Plum Green on the Rockstar Superhero Podcast. Your promotional material state that you were born in a squat in England and raised in New Zealand. And I assume yeah. that these were choices that your parents made to kind of, you know, move you around and, and get on with it, so to speak. To, but I'm curious, was it part of it to live under the crown? You know, was it a British citizen thing? Um, how did that journey begin yeah. for you? Um, I feel like um, my parents were really deliberate with all the decisions they made. Um they're both Europeans. They both weren't really at the time. Their mm-hmm. uh, British passport was much more valuable than other. Well, in their eyes, mm-hmm. they wanted me to have um, have it so that I could access the rest of Europe as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, especially from my dad's upbringing, he experienced a lot of um, it's, racism. Is a hard was a strong word, but I know that he found it difficult, and he mm-hmm. looked up to England and was wanted to give me a few choices, I guess, that he saw that he didn't have. Mm -hmm. But um, while I was being raised there, um, he saw, I think he was holding me and he saw a knife fight just erupt out of nowhere on Electric Avenue. And it wasn't a safe place back then. So he, they made a decision to move to New Zealand and, um, you know, basically, I guess, just wanted safety and yeah. Find sanctuary, which it, New Zealand is pretty much the most boring, safest place on the earth. So they made a good choice. Well, it seems beautiful mm-hmm. and lovely to me. I mean, I've never been there, but you know, I live in Washington State in the U.S. And from what I've heard, if I wanted to be an expat in New Zealand, I would fit in comfortably with the, you know, with the temperate zones and the obviously the language is slightly different, the skewed, the accents and whatnot. But um, it seems to be very compatible with my desire for heat waves or lack of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it doesn't get very warm or very hot. Well, compared to Australia anyway. Yeah. Where we What's are, it's just coming into summer and it's, well, it's already getting pretty warm. Yeah. What drew you to Australia then? How did you end up going from New Zealand to Australia, if you don't mind the last part of that story? No, oh, of course not. Um, just wanderlust. I'm just always wanting to meet new people, have experienced new things. Yeah, see new things, explore. Yeah, yeah. Melbourne is quite a, a big city compared to where I grew up and um, was really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you find yourself longing for the quiet, though, of New Zealand? Or do you, are you still, I mean, you're such a young woman. I would imagine that you would still, you know, nothing would be too new for you yet. But I've, I've always found that children, you know, we all wish we could be in the exact opposite of where we grow up. But then we yeah. find ourselves years later going back to what we started with, right? Yeah, I don't know. In a weird way, I kind of... um I get those feelings uh, to London because um, some of my earliest experiences were just um, mosh-like uh, places and 
Christmas on Oxford Street kind of thing where everyone's jammed together. I'm not sure if that's even going to be a thing actually in future. But, um, yeah, no, uh, I'm not quite at the point where I want to go live there, but I do miss it a lot, especially the people. But, um, yeah, no, no desire to move back there. I actually, I want to live in Bulgaria. Oh. Or or Spain, either one of those places. I'm really, really hoping that eventually uh, that happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> living yeah. in Europe would be really ideal. Yeah, you know, um, I don't want to get too personal, but I I'm curious if that means that your family is Bulgarian or Spanish or a combination of the two. Actually, no. Um, although Bulgarian, um, Bulgaria does use Cyrillic, which is which is mm. um, I I mean, you know, I. I'm not fluent in reading it, but I can read a bit. And um, Spain, um, I just fell in love with it when I went on tour there um, over Europe. And um, I've been learning Spanish for the last three years and wow. really want to go and immerse myself. Um, yeah, no, no relation. I'm just really, really excited to go there again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you're the curious type. Like you said, wanderlust, it's what took you to Australia. Why not keep going, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to go visit everywhere. Mm. Tell me about your early days, you know, the discovery of music in your life. Um, what were the key moments that shifted the sand under your feet? Um, I don't think there were any sort of key moments. Um, both my parents are musicians and mm. um I used to, they used to give me great concerts before bedtime. Um, and it just, there was never any kind of doubt. There's never mm. any kind of, uh, it was always just music, 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 music all the time, everywhere. Mm -hmm. mm. So, um, yeah, I feel like it comes from a very instinctive place rather than any kind of um, conscious decision. Yeah. DNA. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love that. I don't think it's common. I used to think, you know, when I when I first started doing this show, one of the common questions was that very thing, you know, who who are you influenced by? You know, uh, was it your family? Because a lot of times artists come from artists. It's, you know, it's it's not an accident that it's this way. It's kind of how we're created. But lately I've seen a lot of times that um, artists are doing it almost in defiance to what their parents wanted, right? The idea of, of not living this bohemian lifestyle, right? Um, but finding something that's safe and predictable and you can settle down. You didn't ever have any fears, correct? Um, no, never any fears. Although I, I do think that it's very much the same for me. I don't think my parents really wanted me to be a musician and really, really uh, immerse myself in that sort of thing. Um, uh, both of my parents are teachers, and I think that um, they just wanted me to um, be be safe and get an education, <laughs> like any other parents. Um, but I mean, but they're both pretty sort of. Res at the end of the day, they're just like, okay, you're going to do what you're going to do, whatever. <laughs> We're not going to try and stop you. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Um, well, as I said before, and it's true, and I'm not blowing, you know, blowing smoke. Your voice is stunning, and there's something about it that's just revelatory. And obviously, there's a lot of great voices in the world. Um, I made a joke a little while ago about Lana Del Rey, but I mean, she wishes she had your voice. Trust me. What? Um, oh, you, your voice, Plum. Your voice is, eh, it's, it's all right. It's different, but it seems. As though, you know, you know, everything about her um, is amazing, but it's also full. It's loaded with artifice, right? The fake name, the fake glamour. I mean, it's part, it's her style. And don't get me wrong. It's this is not a knock, but it doesn't feel real. I'm not sympathetic to her cause because I don't believe she's depressed, if that makes right. sense. Her, her music. Right is clearly storytelling, but it's that whole woe is me thing, which is very interesting. It's intriguing. I, I think her performance style, it's, it's very sort of exaggerated and I really enjoy it. But what I love about yours is it's intimate. Um, it has this slow burn goth thing that's going on. And I mean, clearly this is your style, but you know, we're here to talk about this new album, Somnambulistic. Um, I think I pronounced it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. It means, it means sleepwalking, correct? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, when choosing the album name, I really didn't. I mean, yeah, it wasn't about sort of, you know, marketing and what's going to stick in people's minds. It was just yeah. purely what felt right. And I understood from the beginning when yeah. friends of mine would say, some number th- <laughs> and it just makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a um, it's a, it's a 50 cent word as they call it. <laughs> um well all that said what what drew you to this sort of dark hearted world, you know, you the, again this dark soul. It it's it's something that you don't hear too often. I'm curious if this has always been part of your sort of interior, you know, part of your worldview or is mm-hmm. it artistic escapism? Um I think that uh I mean I wrote the album to be lullabies for adults. Um and lullabies generally, I mean especially for kids if uh, for explicitly for escapism. It's very much hush little baby don't cry everything's going to be all right. Um this album is a little bit more realistic. Um I wanted it to be comforting, but it's not. It's not saying. It felt, I guess, a, a bit dishonest to write something, especially for adults, um, that's comforting, but completely ignoring the fact that life is terrifying and scary, and and we need each other. We need to protect each other and be real with each other in order to properly feel safe. Mm. So I suppose that yeah, that's where I wrote, I wrote the album from that place. That needing to needing to comfort and protect because everyone everyone really knows how well everyone should know how life is twisty and turny and scary and completely not sure. Um, yeah. It's never yeah. Well, it doesn't um, feel. I, oh, go ahead. Did I answer that question? <laughs> I'm not sure if I fully answered that properly. No, um, it's fine. There are no wrong answers. It's your it's your words. It's your feelings. I mean, that's what we're here to talk about. It's all all bets are off, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, there's a there's a melancholy to it right um i mean i guess that's probably an obvious word um but it does not feel falsely dramatic you know it Mm. it it it, it feels i mean again looking at the things you've done in the past that you're moving more towards what i would call the cinematic if you will Mm. what in what you're creating and um i mean the videos i've seen are clearly super atmospheric um and I'm hoping that someday enough people will see this and maybe even get you on a film soundtrack, you know? And oh yeah, absolutely. That's definitely what I'm, what I'm into. That would be yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was my um, hope that you'd be open to film scoring or some soundtrack work, you know? Yeah, for sure. That would be incredible. Um, yeah, with the videos, um, a lot of them, a lot, we don't have a big budget. It's not well, well pre-planned or anything. A lot of it is just me and a couple of friends just, on the spot going, okay, what would look cool in this situation and having fun. Um, It's very different to creating the music. It's a whole different thing. So, um, yeah, I never even thought that other people would see it. (laughs) So all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, no, I have to put this video out and people are going to watch it. (laughs) But, yeah, it is quite cinematic. And yeah do you do you do a lot of promo do you, i mean are you comfortable with it um but what do you mean by promo you mean making videos and just just all of it you know like you and i talking today you know i always um you know as i talk to people um some people i'm not saying you don't <laughs> so i'm not putting words in here uh, in advance but but uh, the thing that i've noticed time and time again with so many different artists is they're introspective and they're they're creatives and they're and they're good with being keeping their head down if that makes sense you know doing mm-hmm. the doing the self production but when it comes to doing self promotion getting out uh-huh. there uh, making yourself known you know standing on a red carpet of any kind right uh, getting on a video with with somebody like myself um, or even reaching out to labels to you know gauge interest a lot of people they just won't do that and then they'll sort of quietly grow off to the side, but they may never be heard the way they want to. And I'm wondering, um, with such a soft personality, because you have this sweet, gentle nature to you, has that mm-hmm. been difficult for you to get your work out there, right? To 
pressure it and promote it and say a lot about it to people. Mm, yeah, it feels like constant job interviews. Um, really not good, especially because I think it's not in the Kiwi kind of culture either to talk mm -hmm. yourself up. It's quite a shameful thing. So on top of me being quite an introvert, and I have to admit I'm really shy, um, on top of that, yeah, it's not. it hasn't been easy, um, I, especially with the writing biographies. I'm, I'm really lucky to have um, some close friends who are just extremely exceptional when it comes to writing those because otherwise I wouldn't have a biography. I can't say anything about myself. It's terrible. Mm. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. writing biographies is the worst. Yeah. It's so uncomfortable. Well, well I hope yeah, I'm yeah. not making you uncomfortable asking you these oh, questions. No. You know, yeah, I'm, no. a, I'm the exact opposite, right? Um, I am very extroverted and very loud, um, very vocal about what I feel. And a lot of people, they'll watch my show or they'll listen to my show and they'll say, you can't possibly mean what you're saying because everybody i talk to i'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> but but the reality is is i only have people on the show that make me say oh my god right you know what i mean i think yeah, it's a good thing um i i you know i really enjoy um people in my life who are extroverts i think it makes sense it would be really difficult if we were both <laughs> really nervous and introverted <laughs> right now no, no, it's fantastic. I um, appreciate it. I really appreciate your energy. Oh, good, good. Well, um, I will only torture you a little while longer, but thank yeah, you. It's fine. Um, it's not. It's it's nothing compared to writing a biography, talking about myself. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay. Well, this next thought is something that I love to ask people, uh, and I've I've sort of reconditioned it to uh, speak to you specifically but to me your music sounds like it was made for a church of the damned i mean i've really Ooh. thought of yeah i've thought about this and <gasps> or, or maybe a church for the searching right and wow. how do you feel about the spiritual nature of things and do you believe that you've been created with this voice i mean are you open to the idea that you're a gift to people like myself who've discovered you. I, I, I wouldn't call myself a gift. <laughs> That's the New Zealander in you, though, because you are. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, um, yeah, I think um, you don't necessarily, like I was saying, have to have parents who are musicians, but I think it certainly yeah. helped, especially um, – my, my grandmother on my mother's side um, had the most incredible voice I've ever heard. And I think that, um, honestly, it's been watered down. I'm lucky that I, you know, got her desire to sing. And, it, yeah, it feels really good. It's just a natural kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you, when you think about your family and you think about where you are today in your life and, and you know, where you are in the sort of the music business. I mean, obviously it's, it probably feels like it's not very far in a sense because nobody ever feels like they've gone far enough, but what have you given up in regards to your career? You know, do you, do you believe in the sacrifices of lifestyle to achieve a dream or, or not? Because I, I say this because I'm a dad. Okay. And I was a professional drummer for a long time and mm -hmm. I missed the business. I mean, I cannot, exaggerate <laughs> how much mm -hmm. I miss the business. But I also know, at least at this time in my life, leaving my family behind to pursue a career, you know, with, with little or no pay, you know, no way to pay maybe the bills. That's something I couldn't choose. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what it's like to be somebody, you know, younger and, and, and newer in the business you know, I know this is a long-winded question, but basically, what have you given up? I feel like um, I really miss my dad. Um, he's mm. kind of, um, I've, yeah, when, whenever I see him on Zoom, I notice that he's got a little bit grayer. He's grown a big beard. I don't know. I, it's partially because of COVID. I haven't been able to get home. Mm. So I, feel, I worry I'm missing out. But... It's less about being a, being involved with music, I guess. It's more about making the decision to move away from home mm. and not being able to get back when I wanted to. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. in terms of giving things up, um, I'm not really quite sure. I'm, I think, I th- I had a long, long pause, um, of, from doing music, uh, for quite a few years. Tried really hard to just stop and try and focus on survival and hmm. my my the security of my future, and it was it was just a nightmare. Um, I really lost my identity, my sense of self, and um, lost a great deal of pleasure and happiness in my everyday life. So mm. I realized it was impossible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel like really uh, it would be more, uh, if I was still in that headspace, I think I could just talk about more what it feels like to not do music anymore. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it does. Uh- but it makes me wonder then are you in a sense do you consider yourself a full-time artist and musician um i don't want to get into your personal life of course but i'm curious if you know if you do this full time or if you're you know working if you will to pay the bills because like i said i i couldn't do it i couldn't make enough money in the business right yeah no of course not i can't make uh, enough music uh, money for music to do that full time i do have um uh my own um business that i don't really talk about but it is creative creative thing that I do um which um is fantastic um I have definitely done some pretty soul destroying work in you know my life like (laughs) when I first moved here um my first uh I picked up some cafe jobs I met some amazing people and it's yeah it can be hard for sure money is not the reason why anyone should get into music I mean unless they're already wealthy (laughs) it's impossible (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is, you know, and most people don't understand the the insanity level, if you will, right? At least compared to normal society, artists like yourself, it's very, very difficult for others to comprehend how you feel about your world, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you mentioned a second ago, the soul destroying, right? Traditional jobs are the worst type of experiences because they remind us that we should be elsewhere, but we can't be. It's it's like we're not allowed to thrive at the very thing we're exceptional at, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then people yeah. think we're crazy because we won't pursue something average. And it isn't to reduce the value of what other people are doing, but we're just not cut from that cloth. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I have a feeling, I think a lot of people feel that way, even if they don't have a desire to make music. Um, a lot of, a lot of the times, um, when I speak to people who do have, um, sort of, I guess, uh, admin jobs or something, a lot of the time they have to really put on a very, very tight concrete mask in order to get through. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the times people who they work with are probably just as crazy and eccentric and, and wild and fun, but they can't show it to each other. It's very interesting. It's sort of like a bunch of people walking around with very secure masks on. Yeah. It's so true. Uh, my best friend was like this. Uh, he was a genius guitar player, but he spent his life sort of behind this facade of, you know, this falsehood. Mm. And... And again, because people couldn't see behind it because he wouldn't allow them to see behind it, you know, always protecting. And I understand the self-interest, uh, the self-preservation of that. But, you know, so many artists are taking their lives because they cannot express themselves in the way that they absolutely need to. It's a it's a mm-hmm. requirement. It's a physical, not just a mental requirement We're we're our DNA is dying if we're not building something and I, I guess i just want to say i congratulate you plum because your your music is has this foreboding feel to it but again it's so genuine um i can you. tell you're really really conveying who you are with it and you know if there's anything i could say to you today it would just be please keep going because it's really truly extraordinary stuff and it and it both breaks my heart and warms me at the same time Thank you. Um, I definitely want to keep going if I can, for sure. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, before I let you go, I have a few other questions for you, and I hope it's okay. Sure. Um, 
on on somnem so, now i can't say it all of a sudden somnem I, I just call it somnem okay uh, well on somnem <laughs> if you were to pick um your favorite child and i know this is an unfair question but it's very sophie's choice but okay. what you know what would you say is your favorite track what's the one that speaks to you the most um i think it changes a lot um but i really uh, I remember how I felt when I wrote Here We Go because it, mm. I don't really like to talk about what songs are about but because um, they're about multiple things at once. But this one in particular, um, I wrote it when I had this experience of opening my eyes in the morning and realizing that I wasn't depressed anymore. <laughs> and I felt um, this sort of new... Uh, excite, not excitement, but this new sort of feeling of possibility and hope that I hadn't felt in a really long time. Hmm. But they, yeah, obviously they all, all the songs mean a lot to me and um, I, they're very purposefully in order for a reason. Yeah. Um, they are lullabies. They're meant to um, comfort and it is um, about dreams, but it's also very much a narrative of, it's not about depression, but it's about, getting through it and making the conscious decision and effort to recognize that your life is worth it and you're going to keep mm. going. Mm. And so I guess I, I get, I get the same feeling of hope and mm. possibility mm. when I listen to that song, but I, I'm not sure if anyone else would get that. Um, no, but that speaks to me. My, uh, my brother was very ill when he was a little boy and the doctor told him, that he could live, he could survive this illness if he just treated it like he was in a dark forest. And all he needed to do was put a flashlight down in front of him so he could see his path out of the mm. forest. And mm. in fact, I will tell you, it's, it's actually uh, kind of emotional for me to talk about still, but uh, he did pass away recently. But he lived 51 years and he would love what you've created because it is it is that that sonic pathway through a very dark forest but there's mm. that light at the end and i mean i know we're using maybe trite you know traditional easy ways to explain it but i love the fact that you said i don't want to explain it because it really does need to be up to the listener but that's what it drew me to that's what it reminded me of so the fact that you said this out loud actually kind of makes me misty because mm -hmm. you know it it says that we're all walking through something um some of us um, in depression some of us in something that we believe is depression like but mm -hmm. it speaks to so many people and i think it's so important for i know i'm going to keep pounding this in but it's so important for people to hear this um because it's it's worth it's worth challenging us over, if that makes sense. Mm. I think um, the forest uh, analogy is actually really beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to say to a kid as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, I know the music business is a business first, and that's what makes it so hard for somebody like yourself who's really thinking about the art and being creative at all costs. Um, but obviously it's comprised by, you know, a few legends and a lot of people obviously hope to become legends themselves. Um, yeah. I know it would be arrogant to assume that, you know, uh, you're sort of in this legendary or pre-legendary capacity right now. But do you feel that you've achieved something that is really worth remembering? I mean, when you look at, back at this, do you believe you'll be remembered fondly? Um, I, I tend towards uh, being a bit nihilistic. I think that if someone listens to it and they really, uh, it, you know, is um, meaningful, then then that's fantastic. That's what mm -hmm. I that's I, what I'd love. Um, but I don't I don't really think about that. I think um, all all art is really important. It's so subjective, objective. Um, I, I'd like to think that, um, well, one of the the things that sort of pulled me out of feeling absolute despair was that you have to be good and useful and there for people around you. 
um, you can't just continuously worry about things that are happening around the world because you can't control them. Mm -hmm. So I'd like I'd like to think that um, I can be strong and good for people around me. Yeah. So um, you know, I, that's the kind of lasting uh, effect that I think about that I want to have in the world. But um, yeah, so yeah, I don't really think about that. <laughs> no, that's it's fine. I mean, I, I completely understand. Um, it's very much as though you're in an airplane, right, or a jet for example, and let's say you lose cabin pressure, right? And they always say, put the mask on yourself before you help somebody else. Because if you, yeah. if you pass out, you can't help somebody else. Exactly. And yeah. Your music yeah. does that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank I you. love it. It's doomed to inspire. <laughs> <laughs> I love the music for uh, dark. Um, I think you said dark church or. Oh yeah, the idea of the uh, how did I put that? I'm, 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 I didn't. It's not a question I wrote down, but I'm let's see, the Church of the Damned. Yes, and the Church <laughs> of the Damned. Oh, I love it. I'm gonna have to quote you. Oh my goodness! Please do. You don't even have to give me credit. Just take it, man. Make something out of it. Um, before I let you go, last question. Um, parents, because they're artists and because they're teachers, and mm -hmm. as you'd mentioned that you feel like deep down inside, maybe they wish you hadn't pursued this yet. I think they're, I imagine they're very happy with your choices because they can see you're so exceptional um, without embarrassing you. <laughs> was there ever a moment, and this is the last one here. Um, was there ever a moment when your parents said, honey, please don't do this. And you did it anyway. Um, no, no. I mean, my dad asked me not to go to Morocco, and I did anyway. But uh, no, no, no. Um, my no, my my dad said to me, "Look, you know, he's a he's a sort of anti-capitalist, um, you know, non-religious, um, an anarchist." Um, he said, "Look, oh. you know, if you become a Catholic church nun, I will still love you. I support you. You know, <laughs> um, but." Um, and my, my, I think my mother just doesn't really care. Mm. <laughs> She's like, do what you want. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, yeah. I think it was more just a general tone that I, I got of disapprovement, um, but it was never explicitly said. Yeah. Well, but based on what you said in the beginning, when you talk about his or your family's, in a sense, desire to get away from persecutions right to the whatever you want to call it racism or how you want to say it, not you know social social structure things not fitting in correctly mm -hmm. it makes it makes sense why he would feel that way you know there's there's so many there's so many isms right the institutional of anything um can ruin the beauty of the simplest things and i i think what you said a second ago is is the best thing any of us could pursue which is when you get down to it our purpose our vision our art it's for others. And mm. I, I love what you said, Plum. I, 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 I thank you so much for being here. You're extraordinary and um, I don't want you to be uncomfortable, but yeah, you really are something special and I hope you, I hope you know that. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, well, thank you very much for having me. It was really nice talking to you.